<laughs> and they're over there. So there's no admission fees to the sanctuary, but there is a donation. So we're gonna go ahead and fill out a donation envelope. And we're starting our educational experience at Shiwa with Ashley. But so Cimarron, he was one that we rescued a number of years ago from another. Um, home, another facility that was actually trying to train him by hitting him over the head with a PVC pipe. Oh, nice. um, so for the first couple years of his life, Cimarron had seen nothing but abuse, and what they called it was rough play. Um, again, abuse. But um, So Cimarron has been alone the first two years of his life. It's not like we could introduce another animal to him. Not only that, but panthers as a whole out in the wild, they are very solitary animals. They have a large range of area that they need to live in, and should another male come into that area, they will actually fight and most likely kill each other over it if one doesn't back down. So they fight with each other over land, over females, over all of these different things. Uh, and they are very territorial, so a lot of people will ask why we don't have another animal in with, Simr with Simran. That is exactly why. Um, another thing about Simran is he is a Florida panther. Florida panthers, cougars, mountain lions, they are all part of the larger family, which is the puma family. And pumas are some of the largest of the cat species that can actually purr. So when Simran's in a really good mood, he can actually, he'll purr, and it's just like a what, engine just kind of idling there. So he purrs when he's in a good mood. Um, Thanks. So if a cat can roar, Watch it, it cannot get your purr. fingers closed. If a cat can purr, it cannot roar. They have to have very specific vocal folds in their vocal tract in order to be able to purr. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. It's focusing on the fence. It's right through the bone. Now, Cimarron is the only animal on our property that we don't have any human contact with, meaning we don't go into the enclosure, and that's because he's completely intact. He has all of his claws, he hasn't been neutered, and the main reason why he hasn't been declawed, actually two big things. One, it's illegal to declaw large cats in captivity, but two, it's very painful. It's just like taking off the very first knuckle in your finger. Whether it's large cats or house cats at home, it's a very painful process. It can set on arthritis early on in age. Uh, it can cause litter box displacement, all sorts of different things. It's not something we'd ever do to Simran for our own benefit. So, unfortunately, we do have to give him all the love in the world through the fence. Even though I don't personally think he would mean to harm us in any way on purpose, just him trying to check us out, the strength of his paw could easily knock someone um, so out and seriously Leo, hurt So, he came somebody. to us from a house situation. He was in a home where they actually decided to keep him in a cat carrier at their bedside. It was a very small-shaped cat carrier. They thought, hey, maybe if we do this, he won't grow to be his full bobcat size. That's not how things work. Um, so, unfortunately, that was Bob Leo's life. He has been declawed. He looks very lean. He knows we're all watching him. He knows he's a little old lady. She is a little old lady, yes. She's cute. Um, Indy actually just celebrated her 13th birthday Aww. in May. May 1st. Does she have bad eyesight? She's actually completely blind. So she has lost her sight to glaucoma. Um, Indy, we rescued her. She was an accidental litter. It was her and her two brothers, Tian and Chakwa. And when we first brought them here, we knew that they were something special. Um, but in the very beginning, for the first three or four months, they had to be in um, our volunteer coordinator, Sue's household, and she had to give them 24 seven care. Again, this is 
side. She is actually safe with large cameras though, so you can bring it in. Just watch the strap. Loud as possible, okay? We'll see if we can get the whole sanctuary going. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> getting in trouble because he has paperwork and everything with him so um, they actually did the right thing they found us themselves and they drove him down here at four months old um, he was half this size even less than that as a little tiny puppy um, and he's grown into this ginormous tall legged I call him daddy long legs sometimes because yeah he's like on stilts um, but he is a very um, wolfy personality boy he's very shy that's why we're called shy wolf out in the wild, these guys are shy animals. They want to take care of their families and be left alone. There is no such thing as a big bad wolf. That was a term that was created by Hollywood for Hollywood's purposes um, because they were an easy animal to target. But as you can see, this guy here, we've had him since he was four months old, and he's still very weary and standoffish of all of you. That's how they are out in the wild as well. They want to stay away. They want to take care of their family and survive, and that's pretty much it. Hi, chat. You guys should kneel down and slam hand the fence because she'll she may come up and rub on there. Come here, silly girl. Chatty, come see these nice people. Come see. Them. No, I don't have any more eye drops. She thinks I have her eye drops. Uh, I don't have them. They're in my pocket. You're all done with this. Go say hi to the people. Go say hi to the people. Mm -hmm. Her now Chatima, she and her three siblings were an accidental litter from another facility. We have Chatima, Namid, Masoon, and Mariah. Um, just like out in the wild, these uh, four together, they didn't work out. So uh, even like in human sibling rivalry, that's exactly what Chatty and her sisters had. Um, so out in the wild, that's perfectly fine. They can run off and start their own families, but in captivity, they... Home. You can pet, rub. You love to be scratched and rubbed. Once he lets you do it under the chin, go for it, guys. Look, he's here. Come here, come see everybody. You have to spread your charm. He'll come back. Yeah, she's a skeptic. She absolutely loves hair, though, so if you guys have your hair down, you just kind of put her head towards you. She head rolls all over the place. Jenna, that's good for Jenna. You guys are guinea pigs. We've only been doing this for about three weeks now. Let's try and get the other two to get Hi, Jenna. Into you. Come here, buddy. Come and see everybody. Spread your charm. Come here. She said, come on, everybody. Rub, rub, rub. Pat, pat, pat. He loves to be fed. Come on, Raven. It's okay. He's sniffing all of us. Bless you. Check everybody out. Yeah. Yeah. My dog's going to be really jealous when we get home. Like, you guys. <laughs> Mars too. <laughs> so truth be told, um, Loki was labeled as a wolf dog, but he's one of those cases that we see very little to no dog in him. There's probably a shred of dog if it's in there anywhere. Come here, Raven. So you guys are interacting on, with pretty much a full wolf right now. He really likes these guys. This is so 
so nice that I'm seeing Raven do this. Come in here. Hey, how old is Raven? This one. How old? Yeah. Uh, he's up he's there. Ten. I think ten years old. Yeah, 10 probably or 11. ten now. You want me to push him over around? No, I'll do it. Okay. He might. Come he here, buddy. Not. Come on. Come and see everybody. I mean, I can hang out with him. Like, no come on. Come <laughs> and see everybody. Come on. Come over here. You didn't smell these guys. When did you get right guys, behind yeah. his butt? That's when he gets up and moves. Please hit it. Mm -hmm. Loves to be scratched and rubbed. <laughs> Raven, what are you doing under there? Come and see these guys. <laughs> hey, Raven. That's the girl's name. Jenna. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Remember, donations. She's a sweet girl. She just, Hi. you don't know where she came from or if she had seen abuse in her past. So she's a little standoffish, um, but for her size, she's super strong. And anytime she starts rubbing on anyone, she always knocks you down to the ground. <laughs> very much like a puppy. We actually just figured out that he's probably about two and a half, three years old, so he's still got a lot of years left on him, but we are very proud about what he's turned Hi, out to be. Huh? I would just be careful. He's Hi. Crazy. Oh. Yeah, back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Yeah. You like your whole team. Um, and they, but they're not needed to spread. They're not uh, breeding enough to be right. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. How did you get that bracelet? I remembered facts about today. Which one did you share? <laughs> that wolves mate for life in nature. In nature. Aw, yeah. And what did you learn? <laughs> I learned not to look a wolf in the eyes at their level. It means challenge. That was oh. <laughs> It was the one wolf that we were looking at online last night, uh, the residents who live here, and Kate was like, I don't trust that one. His eyes were pretty um, captivating, big yellow eyes. And that's how I got this bracelet. So this is a residential area. It's just a couple who has who have opened up their house to rescue these animals and care for them. I would definitely recommend coming to visit here and supporting by giving a donation or even donating online through their website. Check them out. They have all of the, the wolves and the animals that live here and information about them. You can call, you can ask questions. They were very informative, very helpful. Um, I know that they're very dedicated in what they do. So again, this is Shy Wolf Sanctuary in Naples, Florida, the educational experience, uh, giving you a guided tour and meeting the animals. I'll share the information below. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.